When I hear mushrooms, I hear the food that I don't like <laughs> and the psychedelic kind, which I do like. Yeah. So what is the kind of mushrooms sure. you're about? So what's the difference? I'll break it down this way. Yeah. There's three types of mushrooms. One, there's culinary mushrooms. Those are the ones you're used to seeing maybe at Whole Foods. You okay. know, the white button, ubiquitous mushrooms, the portobellos you right. might see. Then you have what you could call psychedelic mushrooms, psychoactive mushrooms. Those are the ones that you trip mm -hmm. out and you see trees talking to you. Then you have the third category, which is now becoming more prevalent, which is medicinal mushrooms. And these have been used throughout human history in all cultures, ancient Siberian shamanism, ancient Chinese medicine, Native Americans would use it, even in South America. So it crosses the gambit. And these are the most medicinal medicinal herbs really in the entire herbal spectrum. So right. you're looking at these mushrooms like shaga, reishi, turkey tail, lion's mane. Some of them are okay to cook, but mainly you, these are you actually extract them with tea or you extract them in alcohol. That's how you actually break it down, get their antioxidant chains or cofactors, their their mineral content, which they're plentiful of all of these. Yeah. So how did you learn about all this? Because I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of following along because the words you say I've heard before in other podcasts, but I don't fully know what they mean. Got it, got I, it. It just sounds yeah. vaguely like, yeah, it seems like he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> but Happy to define any of these but, words. And, yeah. and I really want the people at home to understand, like, what are the benefits for it? Like, why would they take the medicinal mushrooms? How do sure. you know it works? Right. What does it help? Well, I'll lead, I'll lead you down that journey. I'll, I'll hit the first question and jump yeah. right in is I got into medicinal mushrooms really originally through my grandfather. My grandfather was apparently born in a cave in World War II in Italy. <laughs> the rumor goes, the myth goes, my grandfather's a great man. So he was born in a cave in World War II in Italy. And in Italy and in France and in that area of the world of Europe, mushroom hunting is like an Olympic sport. What you'll experience if you ever go and you're, you're driving around during mushroom hunting season, you'll see dozens and dozens of cars parked on the side of different forests and entire family go and that's actually their experience of joy almost like if you were to take a family to go skiing or snowboarding that's their idea of happiness and fun go mushroom hunting with the whole family bring everyone wow. out so you'll see grandparents kids the whole generation of a family will be out there friends will be out there with and they baskets. know which mushroom is which right because aren't there some that are also poisonous absolutely yeah very rare for a european to get poisoned mushroom hunting okay more likely for someone in america too because some of the first generation immigrant information doesn't get passed down that well because there is slightly different species here in america that right. can be lookalikes of ones in europe but they're not good here so right. it's something you do have to to get taught let's make that clear you that know, is something pick for sure any mushroom and start eating oh this looks like gonna be healthy yeah, yeah right? exactly yeah, you yeah. pop that next thing you know your liver fails in three days you're like what did i do <laughs> damn it shane <laughs> yeah and some literally will kill you very slowly and some will kill you fast mm. so they say every mushroom's edible some only once <laughs> so with uh that's a bar <laughs> it's, a, yeah, it's a hard bar <laughs> so with mushroom hunting my grandfather grew up in that environment he's from a town that was very famous for truffle foraging so my grandfather then comes over to canada where i was born and raised and my parents would send me to my grandfather's farm he has like a little hobby farm and it's beautiful 80 acres cows chickens goats like everything you would think on a farm right yeah and he had all these different forests on the farm so all these different styles of mushrooms would grow in different ecosystems of the forest there's an area where it's more sandy where morels would grow and there they could grow in their Oh, he's not like planting them or whatever. No, they're just wild. That's just what they are. Yeah. Just like, you know, wildflowers coming up every season or certain okay. plants appearing, certain trees bloom at certain times. Same with mushrooms, just underground usually or on trees. There's tree mushrooms and there's ground mushrooms, which we will discuss. Do they all grow from shit? No, actually just... Just a small group does, and mainly they're psychoactive mushrooms. Got it. But the psychoactive mushrooms also don't grow from shit. There's a lot that don't, like Amanita mascara. Okay. But you have to do it a certain way to prepare it in order to get the benefit and not get killed. While so it's not like it. your grandfather was saying, let me make all these mushrooms. Just He had the farms, and the <laughs> yeah. mushrooms were there. On the 80 acres, there was just several areas where the mushrooms yeah. would grow, and they would come back every year, like literally fruiting plants or fruiting flowers. Okay. So when I was young, I would spend the whole summer with them doing farm work. And then in the evening, the treat was, let's go mushroom foraging. So we would go forage morels, chicken of the woods, all these delicious medicinal mushrooms. And by the way, chicken of the woods actually tastes like chicken. Yeah. Lobster mushroom actually tastes like lobster. It doesn't just look like it. It tastes like it. That's amazing. So there's all these crazy mushrooms out there that people aren't even familiar with. It's almost like you're, you're uh, Easter egg hunting or something. Right? That's it's, what, it's like you're a scavenger hunt. Yeah. It's a treasure hunt. It's a scavenger hunt. It's Easter egg hunt. That's the way I, I could see how it. that would be a great fam familial experience. Very right? Very much. Like, I found one, guys. There's one over here or whatever, right? Like that whole, you're, it, it, it's an adventure. Oh, and not only just a familial experience. Experience. It's also, we've done mushroom, like before I even started Black Magic, we were actually just, I was primarily just offering mushroom hunts to people. We would do cabins okay. up north, luxurious cabins on beautiful lakes, five girls, five guys. That was always the rule. <laughs> <laughs> Got to keep the scores even. And we would go out there and you would have, you know, boxers, DJs, lawyers, you name it. People from all different career backgrounds going yeah. out there, grown men on their hands and knees, looking at the blue mushroom. Mm. Like, what is this? <laughs> it's polysaccharide cave for your immune system what 
this thing can't be good for me. This thing looks like it's going to kill me. It's like blue and yeah, bright. Yeah. It looks like it's turquoise. It's like, no, we're going to brew it tonight. And then you would take, you know, these people who are used to being on their phone, not connected to the environment or nature around them. I don't even know how we tricked half the people, tricked half the people to come out on these trips. Like, right. we're going to a cabin when there's no cell service. Yeah. We're going to eat nothing but organic food and drink kombucha and go mushroom foraging and do kundalini yoga and hot springs. Ah, sounds, sounds kind of fun. intriguing how I say yeah. it, but I'm also used to selling people on it. Right, right. <laughs> but we yeah. would get... Yeah. <laughs> Girl, like, yeah, yeah, yeah that sounds like, about fun. Yeah. Where's the list? <laughs> yeah. So we, we would get these people to come out, and it's just cool because you're seeing people open up this Easter egg part of themselves where right. they're so excited to look at something that they would have walked by their whole life and never had an intimate connection with. And that's important because ancestrally, it's in our DNA to go wild foraging. Think of what's happened in the last 100 years. We went from 99% of our diets were wild foraged foods to now 99% of our diets are agriculturally grown food on farms. Right. Right. If we're lucky and it's not in a lab and 1% of our diet, if that for most people, the most they might get is a wild food is some green tea or coffee. And even if it is, it's not like we're the ones getting it. it that's what I'm saying. There's we're, no connection we're, we're to not, it. Yeah, there's no, yeah. You could argue there's a different energy when you go fishing and catch your own fish. And yeah, I haven't even done that. Which part. I've always wanted yeah, to yeah. do actually. I was just yeah, saying. I know. I was just thinking yeah. we should actually all just do that. Yeah. Forget the mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's a different energy of going to get it yourself. So that was the thing that we, you know, I started off the business doing was not even selling a product. It was actually just bringing people in these experiences. People come for a weekend, disconnect, not be connected to their phone. We'd have people reading books. You know, we throw on like Baroque classical music by the fire. It's snowing outside. And we even mushroom hunt in the snow. There's that's, even, there's trees. That sounds mushroom. amazing. I, we, I, I'm telling you, we still do it today. Not as much, but we love it. Even today, I was at Air One, one of the health food stores in LA, in case yeah. anyone's watching from other places. Trendy Air One health food store. And it's funny because I'm doing an employee training for some of the staff, teaching them about it. And you can see the whole patio at Air One Venice. Everyone's looking over like, uh, can I try some of this product? When can I go on that mushroom hunt you spoke of? <laughs> yeah. People are intrinsically excited about it. Yeah. More than almost any other thing I've seen, bro. It's something, it hits something internally inside people, the ancestral energy of this is what all our great grandparents did. They all foraged their foods, whether it was mushrooms, herbs, barks off trees, roots, berries, you name it, you know? So that's what I love with this is we can bring people back to that consciousness and people get vibrantly healthy after they start taking mushrooms. Yeah. They're connecting to something wild. They're connecting to food that's growing and topsoil that's the most rich of any place on earth. And There's no fun farm. guy also just really intelligent the way it like it, it's underneath the, the earth and all that and can... Isn't it's it? forming its own, you could say its own internet system. For instance, even Japanese subway systems are actually designed off of the intelligence of how the microbiome of the mushroom functions, how the mycelium goes down and spreads out like dendrites in your brain, same similar way. They actually map out subway systems by putting mushroom spores into a slice of dirt and they put all the obstructions of where the buildings are and the pipes. They recreated this and they did this in Japan. It's a real story. To model. To model because the they would watch how the mycelium would grow around certain things to figure out the mycelium knew better than we could. How to get around obstacles. So they built right. a subway system based on what the mycelium wow. did to map it out for them. So just think about that. There's so much inherent intelligence in nature. And you get that when you drink it. When you take the product, when you eat the food, when you take mushrooms, you are, you know, you hear you are what you eat all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, that's true. I mean, that could be proved out in millions of ways. The main thing to look at is if you're eating highly intelligent foods, highly nutrient dense foods and foods that are intelligent, like mushrooms, you absorb that. I've seen people not only have their, you know, their skin glowing after taking mushrooms, not only have a stronger immune system, they don't get sick when everyone else is getting sick, but I've had, have a lot of people say it's literally made them more intelligent. It's made them want to read more. It's made them tune into having more focus when people are talking more presence. So and it's not just Shaga. It's all those medicinal mushrooms I'm talking about. So it really taps you into a different dimension. That's why I love specializing on non-psychoactive mushrooms because I don't think they get enough of a rep yet. They're yeah. very, they're subtle, you know? I don't think most people understand that there's something besides <laughs> yeah. the edible kind and the psychoactive kind. Yep. And hence why still to this day, if we're sampling the product, people are like, is this going to make me trip out? I'm like, well, right. if you're sensitive enough, you'll feel it. It's like the difference. It's like this, bro. Some people will drink coffee. And that's like their hit for that high level energy. Right. But then there's other people who could sit in their body meditate for an hour and get all of that consciousness and last it for seven, eight hours of the whole day right. versus the coffee for an hour. Right. So it depends how you look at it. To me, psychoactive mushrooms are more like you fire up the coffee and it it's going to force you into it. You know, whether you mm -hmm. like it or not, if you drink enough coffee, you're going to be 
yeah. tweaking. It's the same thing with psychoactive mushrooms, but medicinal mushrooms, you have to, you really have to tune something into your body. You have to actually cultivate it from inside, not an outside force doing it to you. The mushrooms seem to bridge that gap. And then it's more like that sweet meditation buzz. And I, I think psychoactive mushrooms play their part, but I really feel the medicinal mushrooms are about to have their real day in the sun.